Raspberry Lamington. Raspberry Lamington. Oh my god, it's too early for those things. <laughs> Thank you. Okay guys, so this is my first coffee in about one month. First sip, here it goes. Oh my god, that's so good. Oh wow. Why is coffee so good? Why is it so addictive? I, uh, I have no idea. So I stopped drinking coffee about a month ago just because, well, the main reason was I was drinking far too much. I was drinking like eight double coffees a day. <laughs> yeah, about eight. eight no, sorry, yeah eight shots or four doubles so four double coffees every day uh, which is obviously far too much and my sleep wasn't great even though i was drinking all those coffees early in the day it's still in your system and uh, i have a bit of dermatitis don't know whether you'd be able to see but i get redness around my face here and i was wondering whether cutting out coffee would help that now it's definitely helped my sleep uh, my sleep has been a lot better but I've still just felt like quite flat most of the time uh, most of the days I just really felt like I've not had much energy and maybe it hasn't been long enough maybe four weeks is not a long enough time to to detox from years of coffee use I'm not sure but um, I've stopped drinking coffee many times and every single time I've come to the conclusion that Life is better with coffee. And I'd find most days, I would just still be thinking about coffee. Like even now, one month later, I would still think about like, I would still get those coffee thoughts in my head every single day. And so I thought today, it's a Saturday, Saturday morning, the sun is shining, you know, why not have a coffee? What's the worst that could happen? So I'm probably going to end up drinking coffee every day again now, but uh, I'm just going to see, see how I feel after this coffee, see how my sleep is. Um, my skin is a little bit better, to be fair. If that gets worse, then I might have to rethink this, but coffee's so good man it's, coffee's very hard to it's very hard to give up cheers coffee sunshine and a walk on the beach today is going to be a good day okay so the plan for today is arms and abs but I'm training back with Jack my buddy Jack tomorrow so we're probably going to do a little bit of biceps in that workout so i might just keep this workout more focused on triceps and arms i'm feeling a little bit sore all over so you know i could easily take a rest day today but i just don't like taking rest days to be honest i enjoy going to the gym i enjoy working out i want to rest as little as possible is it suboptimal from a growth perspective it probably is to be honest i find i make more progress and build more muscle um, when I train less frequently I think like four or five times a week is probably the sweet spot but typically uh, right now I'm probably doing about six or like three days on one day off um, I'm training a little bit later today than normal it's like what 11 11 o'clock right now prefer to train a little bit earlier because it's so hot as you can see this time of year it gets really warm um, we're coming into rainy season so I'm just making the most of the sunshine at the moment now last year we didn't really get any rain for rainy season it was very dry for most of the year actually 
hopefully it stays the same again but if it does start raining I'll probably start doing some trips to different places maybe Thailand maybe Vietnam Philippines if there's anywhere you want to see let me know and if it's if it's close by I might consider it oh it's a busy one today I really feel like I need some pineapple Hey bro. Hey bro. How are you? Yes, good. Nice. One good? Yes, one please. Perfect. What's this? Oh, uh, sauce. Sauce? Sugar? <laughs> <laughs> Salt and chili. Wow. Okay. Uh, no, thank you. I don't oh. think I need salt and chili. Yeah, just that. Okay, so pineapple secured. It's gonna be a good session. I got the pineapple. Okay, we, it's very windy today, guys. So I've got this little, what's this called? A wind, wind protector. I don't think that's the actual name for it, but I don't know. It looks kind of lame, but it's better than getting a lot of wind noise. So arms, I usually like to do two exercises for biceps, two exercises for triceps. Uh, today I'm going to focus more on triceps, like I said already. So I'm going to start with triceps and probably start with dips. I feel like dips is one of the best tricep exercises. It's almost like the squat of the upper body. Especially if you perform a dip with full range of motion. So as I'm coming down, I'm, I couldn't come down any further to be honest. I actually feel a nice stretch in my chest and shoulders as well. Good first set. Oh wow. Yeah, the thing is with arms, my arms don't need much volume. I feel like I can just do one set on a bicep or a tricep exercise and feel a pump. But uh, yeah, good first set. Set two. Yeah, dips are good, man. Dips are very good. So obviously I had my first coffee in four weeks this morning, and then I made the fatal mistake of also having a pre-workout. I didn't have a full scoop, maybe only like half or just over half, but I was feeling like sufficiently stimulated to say the least. You know when you've had a bit too much caffeine and you feel like a little bit uh, jittery and anxious? But after having that pineapple, it's kind of taken the edge off it a bit. So if you ever have too much caffeine, what you can do is if you have some kind of sugar from somewhere, it will, it kind of relaxes your body. Like I've found with carbohydrates, if I'm doing like a low carb diet or zero carb, I just typically have like higher cortisol levels. And if I want to chill myself out, having some fruit, or some carbs, like healthy carb sources, really helps to kind of just calm the body down. Set three. Okay, so this is 
I don't know what the name for this is. It's like a laid back bicep curl. But the reason I like this one is because right now my biceps are in the extended position. You can see my biceps are fully stretched out. So I'm going to get a greater range of motion and it's just a way to work the muscle more. <clears throat> going to push my biceps too hard today because I'm training pull with Jack tomorrow and I'm going to probably do his workout. I don't know how he trains but he's got a great physique so I don't really want to kill my biceps today because it's going to affect my pull session tomorrow so I'm not going anywhere near to failure. I'm just going to lightly touch them, get a nice pump but not really fatigue them. Okay. Set three. Yeah, I can do more there, but I'm not gonna go to failure. So I was watching another YouTube video from Samuel Anoya last night, and uh, it was a vlog showing off his $11 million mansion in Dubai. <laughs> and this guy is like 25 years old. He's got his mansion in Dubai. He's got a penthouse in Amsterdam, I think it is. He's got a Rolls Royce Cullinan, which is like 650K or something. Now, a lot of people, when they see videos like this, they just hate on the guy, like, oh, you're a show off, you're this, you're that. But when I see videos like that, I just think it's fucking cool. It's cool that someone, 25 year old lad, has gone from zero to like, however much money he's made, I don't know, millions and millions of dollars at 25 from scratch. And when I see stuff like that, I, I just find it like fucking motivating because I think, well, if this guy can do it, why can't I? But also when I, when I see stuff like that, it also like, it gives me some kind of dissatisfaction with myself or at least I realize, shit, I could be doing a lot more. Like, am I really living up to my potential right now? Because if this guy has, has made, he's got an $11 million mansion on the palm, how have I not even made a million dollars yet? And he's got 11 to spend on a house plus whatever on his car and everything else that he's got. So, you know, I think it's good to raise your standards. Like a lot of, a lot of people, there's a lot of guys out there are just happy with their dad bod, making 30K a year, you know, living in the hometown that they grew up in all their life. And as long as they've got their beans on toast, and Netflix at the weekend, they're happy. But for me, I could not think of anything worse. And if I was happy with what I had back in England, I never would be here right now. But even though I'm here, and by a lot of people's standards, like I have a good life, and don't get me wrong, I do have a pretty good life, but I just realize there's so much more I could be doing. There's so many levels to this game. And when I see people like this dude, living that kind of life, it reminds me like, 
come on James, you need to do more. What I hope for these videos, like these videos that I make now, they're far more enjoyable to me than the videos that I used to make before because one, I'm already doing this, but two, hopefully it's a little bit more inspirational. Hopefully, even, even if just one person watches this video and thinks, you know what? Working out doesn't look too hard. That actually looks quite fun. Uh, maybe I'm gonna give it a go. Maybe I can get in shape. Even if just one person from these videos gets a bit of inspiration to start or gets a bit of motivation to go back to the gym or decides and finally makes the decision to commit and get in shape, then I'd say that's time well spent. All right, now I'm gonna do rope tricep extension. So I've done the dips for triceps, which is a good kind of like exercise which will stretch the tricep out. This is more like a concentrated contraction of the tricep because it's in more of a shortened position at the top. So this allows me to focus more on the contraction. It's essentially like, the way I see this is a similar to a concentration curl on a bicep exercise. I've just been speaking with a guy now in DMs and he was saying he's interested in coaching. I always ask, when people reach out, I always ask why, because if you have a strong reason why, a strong motivation, the results come much easier. A lot of people make the mistake of just going into the gym because it's a good idea to go to the gym. They just like the idea of being able to tell their friends, oh yeah, I go to the gym. But there's a very big difference between going to the gym because it's a good idea and going to the gym because uh, you have like a strong reason why. Anyway, this guy, he was saying, look, I've been depressed for years. I'm now 31 years old. I want a wife and a kids, but I'm out of shape. I'm like 35% body fat. Um, I need to lose like 18 kilos. Um, what else was he saying? And he was saying he was just kind of like depressed and hopeless and he just turned to drinking alcohol and what a lot of people do, a lot of men, a lot of women as well, but I'm mainly speaking to men here, is they just numb the pain, you know? Like, certainly for me, when I was younger, when I was at university and just after I got kicked out of university, I wasn't happy within myself. So what I did is I just turned to partying and alcohol and drugs and I was just kind of just trying to like numb the pain and just escape my reality and just forget about it. But the problem is that doesn't change your situation. It just exacerbates it. It just makes it 10 times worse because now you've got a hangover. Now you've not got a clear head. Now your habits are messed up. Now you're probably sleeping in. You're probably not sleeping very well. And it's just like a negative feedback loop where as soon as you do one bad habit, then it leads to another bad habit. But the good thing about this is that feedback loops also work the other way. So if you just start going to the gym, you start eating healthy, you fix your sleep. If you just do those three things, then you start thinking clearer. Then you don't want to drink alcohol at the weekends. Then you start prioritizing your health and your mental health and your well-being. And then now you have like space and mental bandwidth to focus on, okay, what do I need to do to change my life? Because I only managed to turn things around once I fixed my health, once I stopped the drinking, the alcohol, once I changed my environment and the people that I was around, that was really the turning point for me to be able to figure out what the hell I was gonna do with my life and how I can turn things around because 
things were not looking good for me. So if you're in that situation right now and you know that you're numbing the pain, you're drinking alcohol, you're turning to drugs, the porn, the weed, the gambling, whatever, just understand that your situation is never, ever gonna get better until you cut those things out of your life. Oh, good. Okay, now I'm going to do some standing easy bar curls. Keeping it pretty light. Okay, set two. Set three. So now you're going to see how how bad I am at ab rollouts. Oh man, that's such a good ab exercise. It's one of the best. Whew. Oh! 
<laughs> oh, wow, what a good exercise. Okay, now it's time for some hanging knee raises. Such a good ab exercise, this one. Oh, set two. What I'm really doing on this as well is when I bring my knees up, I'm breathing all the way out, like <sighs> emptying my lungs, and I get a better contraction in my abs when I do that. Was a fatigue trump. The yeah, ab roll out. Come on, James, you fucking pussy. Last set. <laughs> Ow. Oh. That's like what? Six exercises, less than an hour. Guys, there is zero excuses for not being in shape. 2025 is literally just around the corner. You know what's gonna happen come Christmas, New Year, January. Everyone's gonna be like, new year, new me. This is the year that I finally change. And 90% of those people, if not 95% of those people, will not even make it past January. But you know the people who will? The people who will make it past January are the people who start today. Because if something's worth doing, why wait? We literally have one life, one body, we're only on this spinning rock for once. So we may as well make the most of it. And making the most of it is by being in shape. It starts with being in shape, and then everything else falls into place. The guy I was talking about before, Samuel Anoya, the multimillionaire at 2025, he realized, he said, the starting point for him turning his life around is when he went to the gym. He started going to the gym, he's got his habits in place, he started to see that he can make improvements with his physique, and then his confidence was higher, he was thinking bigger, and then he eventually got into e-com, and that's how he made uh, all his money and he says the biggest factor in his success was him going to the gym because it taught him discipline it taught him consistency and it taught him how to just show up and do things when you don't want to do them so if you don't have the results that you want right now if you're not looking the way you want if you're not feeling the way you want to why wait It has just gone five o'clock and I still haven't eaten anything. I've just had the coffee, the uh, some coconut water and some pineapple and that is it. And it's been pretty easy to be fair. Obviously the caffeine helps and the pre-workout and from the coffee as well, that helps suppress the appetite, but also just being busy. Like I've had calls and I've just been busy all day non-stop. Um, so. It's pretty easy to fast when you, you, your mind's distracted and you've got other stuff to do, but safe to say 
I am absolutely starving right now. So the plan is I'm going to go to the beach with a friend and then check out a new restaurant that I've not eaten at before. It's just opened and they've got a special deal on at the moment. So hopefully I'm going to be able to show you that too. So this happens quite often in Bali where there'll be some problem with the traffic and the road is just completely blocked off. You can see here, I don't know what's happened, but I'm going to have to go a different way. Everyone's turning around. What's up, brother? Good, my friend. How are you today? I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Yes. I'm ready for a fresh coconut. You got quite a selection of drinks here. Wait. Ah. Thank you very much, sir. Very Thank you. Ooh. How good is this? So Instagram knows me so well that I just get ads for food places in Bali and this one popped up. 200k, all you can eat. It's a new restaurant only in October. It's got a lot of different food options down there. I don't know whether you can see it but I just see some massive steak there. So they got my attention. 200k is $12 or $13. Yeah, less than $13, absolutely nothing. I don't know what this is going to be like, but I've got to go check it out at least. Okay, this place is called Beach Roots. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Chicken. Okay, looks good. Can we get some sea salt, please? Okay, so pineapple for dessert with, I think it's got honey and cinnamon on the side. Pretty good. 